We have Villa from him on the phone right now, and we've been having some technical difficulties on both ends, it seems like. so. <laughs> That's the way it goes, yeah. Yeah, definitely. But I figured I'd cut right in and would get this interview locked and loaded and ready to go. I just want to thank you for taking the time to speak with us here on the G-Spot. What's going on? Well, you know, not much. We we had an actually uh, quite an interesting morning. We're in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and a uh, morning started with the whole band going to the Social Security office because now the uh, whole taxation thing is mo- uh, is changed in, uh, in the States since, I think, last May or something. So uh, we need to get ourselves social um, social security numbers even though we're Europeans so uh, we were there with uh, jailbirds and all sorts of people waiting uh, waiting in queue waiting in line to uh, get our stuff sorted so that's how I, that's how rock and roll our morning was <laughs> so straight, uh, yeah so straight from our uh, social security office to uh, to uh, you know 20,000 capacitive festival <laughs> here in Phoenix but it's pretty yeah uh, it's pretty uh, extreme right that that's pretty awesome uh, to say the least I mean I I don't know <laughs> I I can I feel your frustration I'll tell you that I, actually at the end of the day I, I, will, I would say that it was a really interesting experience you know it's uh, one of the things that if you just fly over to the states as a tourist you never get to see that so uh you know, I'm, I'm glad, you know, I'm a lot wiser now. <laughs> it was a good experience at the end of the day. <laughs> hey, we all learn something new every day. Uh, indeed. <laughs> Let's start by asking if you could give us some info on him and how the journey began for the band. Well, um, well, it's a long story. You know, the, the guitar player and the bass player I met back in school when I was about eight or nine years old. So more or less the whole band, we've been growing up together. So, uh, and we started playing in different bands when we were uh, in our pre-teens. And then we formed uh, from this band early 90s and started, you know, recording our first demos on, you know, C cassette and four track recorders. And, and uh, at 90, in 96, we got a record deal. And, um, and after that happened, we started touring in, our, in the small country where we come from, Finland, and uh, did the, the occasional club gig. And, you know, bit by bit, taking these little baby steps, we can, we can kind of expand our territory, you know. So, it's, it's, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a long time. And, you know, we uh, flew over to the States for the first time in, I think, 2002 or 2003, tour proper. And uh, so, uh, so it definitely hasn't been like a global overnight thingy. Well, it, it's hard work. I know this business uh, can be brutal. You know, it takes time, and you got to have patience, you know. But, yeah, in, indeed, but I think that the cool thing about it is, is also that everybody in the band is fairly grounded, you know, because... I, I can't, you know, I can't see us in a place that if all of a sudden we would have been like superstars or whatnot all over the world at the same time, you know, we, we'd we probably dead. Because, you know, all the, the rock and roll excess and getting fancy tour buses and staying at fancy hotels and meeting fancy people, you know, it, it can get to your head pretty quick. So I'm kind of happy that, that uh, it's happened gradually and then usually it seems that whenever we release an album, it's a bit more popular over somewhere in the world than somewhere else so there's always a challenge and the band has always to be on their toes when it comes to touring and all that so i think it's good to have a bit of challenge as opposed to you know just uh growing fat and thinking that everybody loves us <laughs> well i'll tell you you guys got a new cd out called tears on tape it seems to be gearing up with steam could you tell us the concept behind this cd well, you know, we're not progressive rock artists, so it's basically just a combination of, uh, you know, a compilation of songs we worked for the past, what, three, four years. When we started touring in 2010, I started working on new stuff straight away, and, uh, you know, the, the title for the album, more or less, we wanted, to, we wanted the whole thing to sound a bit more organic and, and a bit grungier and dirtier and have a bit more fuzzier Black Sabbath guitars on this one than the one before. And um, that's one of the reasons why we picked the title for the album. We, it's kind of like a hats off or a nod uh, to our uh, idols, you know, the people like Ozzy Osbourne or Paul Stanley or whomever who shed their, you know, blood, sweat and tears on tape back in the day, who made those musical milestones that we are still following. We've never claimed that we're reinvented the wheel, we're just following in the footsteps of the legend. There is an absolute overabundance of great tracks on this CD. Do you, you. Do you happen to have a favorite, and can you tell us what it is about that you like with the track? Well, um, there's one of the bit more melodic tracks is is the uh, title track, Tears on Tape. And uh, it's one of the first ones we got together as a band. And what I like about it, 
uh, lyrically, for example, is the fact that it starts with the phrase, church bells toll and the thunder rolls around me. And the reason for the lap, that lyric is that I'm kind of like um, explaining in words uh, how the first Black Sabbath sound, album sounds. That whole, the, the lyrical aspect of that song is kind of like me traveling through my favorite albums and the, and the musical milestones that made me who I am. That's a pretty cool story, though. You know, I like how you threw the Sabbath in there because I'm a big. I go way back with Sabbath myself. You know, it, it just you, you can you can kind of hear it in there. You know what I mean? Well, 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 hopefully, you know, Sabbath are definitely that's that's the main group uh, when it comes to influences. You know, that's the, that's the group me and our bass player were like so hugely in, into when we formed this band that we started playing Sabbath covers at first, and we still we've been playing um, Hand of Doom and some tracks on occasion, and uh, and we're super happy to see them together. You know, with, uh, unfortunately without Bill Ward. But still, the new album sounded pretty good. So, uh, so you know, it's uh, they're, they're very important when it comes to him. You know, we wouldn't exist without Black Sabbath. That's totally awesome. I'm glad you guys chose th that particular band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know it could have been something totally different, you know, like Toto. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I mean, they they did what they did in the '80s, but you know, I mean, I know, I, I love, and I love that stuff, the AOR stuff. Like, I love Boston. I love Toto. I love all that stuff. You know, it's there's a there's a moment for everything, right? Exactly. What was it like compiling this CD? What do you mean by it? Did it come easy? Was it hard? Did you hit any uh, s bumps well, in the road? I think, it, I think it always, you know, again, it's the same, the same as with touring. It has to be a challenge because, if you, you know, we've uh, we've been together for such a long time, like about 10, uh, 20 years, and uh, this is our eighth studio album. So if there's, no, if there's no new challenges for the band, uh, I'm sure that the, you know, you're going to lack the passion. You're going to lack, lack the kind of, you know, I like, I like the fact about the new album that, it really does sound like a band having a good time and, and enjoying playing together. So, so that was that's what we do. Our pre-production takes months. We just head into our rehearsal place in Helsinki. We start jamming. We start drinking beer. We start listening to Sabbath again, and um, and that's that's where it all you know that's where the magic happens. And then when recording the actual album, when we enter the studio, that's basically we have ninety-five percent of everything ready. And we just leave a bit of space for experimentation and the icing on the cake, so to speak. So, um, it's, uh, and, and, you know, writing a song can, I'm one of those guys, you know, for example, for our previous album that was released 2010, I started writing one of the songs in 2001. So it took nine years for that particular song to be finished. And I'm not saying that's a great song, but, uh, at times stuff happens fast. At times it just needs, it needs its own time to develop. And, uh, you shouldn't like, you shouldn't rush music. You're absolutely right. I mean, it, it takes time to develop this and master it, and it, it's your craft. So, you know, you... Sure, yeah, yeah. I feel when I'm claiming to be, like, a, you know, perfect, that's the, that's the reason to make the ninth album, you know. And and now that we're on tour, we're kind of, like, seeing what are the new songs that work live, what are the, what are the songs that people are connecting to, and, and that's, you know, you live and you learn. You guys categorize yourself, well, I don't know if it's you, I don't know who runs your Facebook page, but I, I just happen to look on it, and your genre is love metal. Yeah, that's what we call it, because, you know, a lot of people, when we started out, they had problems with uh, categorizing what we did, and, uh, and that was also the time that there was a resurgence of, like, the Norwegian black metal and the post-hardcore whatnot, and all of a sudden, all these sub-genres of music started happening. And since we have this kind of, we have this kind of um, melodic, melancholy aspect to our music, um, we thought that it's cool to combine, like, do our own yin and yang, so to speak. <laughs> same, with the, you know, same with the logo of the band, you know, the hardware, combination of a pentagram and a heart. You know, just to be able to touch you know, the light and the dark. Because I think that, you know, we fall somewhere in between. But, uh, you know, the, also the fact that uh, I'm not ashamed to say I love Roy Orbison and Elvis Presley and Cat Stevens and, and Phil Spector's stuff, you know, from back in the day. But at the same time, you know, we were just listening to the new Carcass album that just came out in Europe. I think it's coming out in, in the States early next week. And so we huge fans of, like, all sorts of death metal and black metal and, uh, and you know, and we were listening to Terry Reed just a second ago. So that's kind of like... We're pretty pretty eclectic when it comes to music. Very diverse, and that that's a cool thing to have. You want that from a band. You guys, as you just stated, you're on the road as we speak, doing the Monster Energy Rock Allegiance tour. What has it been yeah. like, and are there any specific memories you could share with us? Uh, well, I think you know we're halfway through this leg of a tour, um, and so it's been kind of like getting into the m mode of mood, more or less. We haven't toured since 2010, and so it's more about getting to um, relearn how to sleep proper in the bunks of the buses and, and stuff like that. And, and, you know, it's the regular, you know, visiting Hooters for the first time in many years, <laughs> enjoying their deep-fried pickles or whatever. <laughs> so uh, 
it, it, it probably sounds a bit touristy to the uh, the average Joe here, but uh, for us uh, Europeans and Scandinavians, it's like being uh, like a kid in the candy store. It's just a lot of a lot of big skies, and and uh, we just came from Canada as well, so there's been a lot of traveling. You know, came from Edmonton straight to Phoenix, and and it's you know it, it's it's been pretty wild. But I still I think that the production is pretty big, so we haven't had the time to really hang with the band so much. And and the and the cool thing about this tour is the fact that it's, you know it's a very eclectic bunch. We have Airborne, this kind of modern day ACDC thing from Australia. We have um, your old remains bit more metally or metalcore or whatever you want to call it then it's him us doing what we do and then at the end of the night it's a uh, ball beat so um so it's a cool mixture of different kinds of bands as opposed to having having several bands that would do exactly the same thing so uh so, and, and so uh, you know the audience has been great but very different very diverse once again so at times it's a challenge to win them over and it's times it's a bit easier shake some hips and you know and uh, everything goes well you know right no it, it, totally what has it been like playing with those bands on this tour yeah, well, it, as I said, you know, it's been exciting. And then we, just like uh, less than a week ago, I had the chance to meet meet up with the guys from Airborne, and, and they're great fun. It's, it's also nice, you know, when you when you spend a lot of time in the dressing room, it's great to hear good music. So we don't have to have our own iPod players or what, whatever with us at all, so we get to hear great music all the time, you know, and straight from stage. So um, so that's a, that's a good part of it. And then also the fact that we've been playing, like, smaller arenas, but then we've done clubs, and then we've done amphitheaters and everything in between, so it's been... So every day is a new challenge, and every day is something new, as opposed to doing the same old, same old every day. Spice it up a little bit. Yeah, in, indeed. And, and so we're, we're happy for this tour, and and, uh, and also, you know, we, we're more or less used to uh, doing uh, our own headline tours, usually club worm. So now that we're our co-headliner, it's also... It's good that it's like a slap in the face. We're not the... <laughs> we're not the uh, rulers of the world when it comes to this tour. So we have uh, we have to fight for uh, for each and every can of Coca Cola. Well, you guys, I'll tell you, I love this new CD. I think it's fabulous. Thank you. I like everything on it. To be honest with you, you guys, are, so much. you guys are hitting this area coming up. What can the fans expect to see from him and their performance? Well, you know, a lot of a lot of bands when they have a have a new album that just came out, they they concentrate a lot of the new material. But I've always found that really boring. So. Um, uh, and since we're co-headliners, we don't do a full set, but we get a good seven minutes of music, which is approximately, what, 15, 16 songs. And that's spanning uh, the whole career, you know, from the very first album we ever did, which not a lot of people actually here have heard, to the latest stuff. So it's a, it's a, it's a combo of everything. And, and it's been going down really well, you know. So I think it's, there's a lot of those noisier, riff-rocky thingies, and, and uh, we want to be noisier than the rest of the bands. So far, so good. You know? Cool, and I'm glad that it's going that well for you guys. Yeah, yeah. After this tour, it looks like you'll be right back at it with a European tour. Is there any difference playing here in the U.S. compared to any other country? Yeah, for sure. There's the um, well, there's language barrier. Then uh, obviously the cultural differences. You know, in some countries people tend to, you know, they tend to have mosh pits and go super wild. And in some countries, like Japan, for example, people kind of like stand still and they listen to the music. So it seems that different cultures appreciate live music in different ways. It doesn't mean that they like it more or like it less. Different way of appreciation and. Uh, but it's the same like the differences between the states, you know. It's um when you you know, East Coast is different than West Coast and, and uh, all that, so so it's always something new. It would be terribly boring if it would be exactly the same every night. Well listen, I just got one more question for you. I'm gonna let you go. I know you're very busy. What can the fans expect next from him? Has the thought of getting back into the studio and start the writing again? Um well, we're, we're just uh, we're just trying to figure out the the schedule. If if everything goes according to plan, um there will be some more touring after the uh, we're going to take a, sh- a small break um, after the European tour is done, and then, then hopefully um, fly back over the pond and come over to the States uh, so- sometime um, in the springtime next year. And we're also trying to figure out if we could make um, if we can make a trip over to Australia and hopefully to Latin America as well, because we've we play Mexico City, yes, but uh, we've never gone to like Argentina or Colombia or a place like that. And uh, there's been a lot of people asking for us to um, travel all over to their country. So it might be that, that um, springtime next year is going to be very, very, you know, geek, you know, filled and, 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 and to a lot of places we haven't been before. So we're just keeping our fingers crossed and, uh, and hoping that everything goes well according to that. You know? Well, my fingers are crossed for you. I want to thank you, Villa Vallo. Is that how you yeah. say the last name? Yeah. 
that's close enough, man. I recognize my name, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you for calling in. I wish you the best of luck. I wish the band the best of luck. Go out there and finish it up hard. Good luck with the new CD, too. Thank you so very much. That's exactly what we plan on to do. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no problem, man. You have a good one. Excellent. Thanks for stopping by the G right. spot. Uh huh, uh huh. That's the only spot. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Have All a right, good one. Time. You too. All right. That was Villa Valo from him. Great guy. Very interesting. They're a Finnish band. They're unbelievable. They crank. They really do. I like their style. You know, their new CD, Tears on Tape. And uh, they're actually on tour with the Monster Energy Rock Allegiance Tour with Volbeat. All That Remains in Airborne. That's going to do it. We're going to get back to the music here on WSUR.